Denver, baby. Well, Glendale. I mean, Glendale. Nice. Okay. Okay. Red to Glendale. Right. Yep. I'm in the GTC area. That's it, baby. I like that area, that Greenwood area. Man. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, exactly. That's where I am. All right. I dig it. Nice. Right by uh, Hampton and 925. Oh man, it's a good spot. You got a lot of good wrestling. What's that? Uh, you got that one, that one balcony spot out there. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they. Yeah. Yep. So we're right over here. We're doing a big Ariel's Entertainment podcast, guys. Woo! We are lit. Today is March 10th. We are live from Colorado, Denver, to be specific. Yeah, available on all podcast platforms, YouTube. Tell all your friends and family this is legit one. We're gonna talk about all about Colorado. Let's go run it up. Welcome, best friends. Welcome, listeners. Shout out to all the millions and millions of listeners, tuners, everybody tuning in right now, everybody watching right now, everybody listening right now all around the world to Ariel's Entertainment Podcast. We have a special one. We have Pac Joe. I am your host, Ariel, Latino Heat, Rico Suave. Yeah, guys, check it out. My hair is growing out. The other day, someone said I look like Johnny Depp from Blow. So I was like, whoa, that's what I like. So I was I was going to cut it. But then when they told me I look like Johnny Depp from Blow, I was like, I'm going to keep the hair. I'm going to keep the hair. So here we go, guys. Ariel's Entertainment Podcast, March 10th. It's Thursday. It's, it's an amazing day. So let's get straight. I said, let's get straight to it, to our amazing guest today. Our guest comes from Colorado as well. So here we go. Let's get He is a motivational speaker he loves martial arts and he's an author he has an ebook i bring you the one the only kyle right Woo! Yo, what's happening ariel baby baby let's make this thing happen let's do it Woo! Mm. gosh i told you i'm bringing all the energy today kyle where you at what's up Bring that energy, man. Look, you got to celebrate that Broncos trade. Congrats to all my Broncos I fans out there. Already. Yep. Bringing That's it big back. Move. Big move right there. Big one. Big one. Celebrate it. Take the weekend to yourself and celebrate that. Oh, my gosh. We finally have a quarterback, bro. Oh, man. How's it feel? Do you know how, <laughs> how many years we've gone without a quarterback here since Peyton Manning? No doubt, man. Hey, it's it's time to come back. Look, I, I'm a Bears fan. I can't lie. I can't lie, man. Oh, but but me? you know, you got you got some you got some hometown fire, right? It maybe bring it back, man. These games are gonna be tight this Bro, year. Okay, hold up, dude. I was just in Chicago. I yeah, left, yeah, last week. What was going on up there, man? My girlfriend has family over there. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, love it. Love yeah, we were city, out, man. We're out there in the suburbs, dude. You know how we do South yeah. Chicago. Yeah, man. So we're out there. Uh, we ate some good food. Uh, we mm. ate at, uh, oh my gosh, man. I'm trying to think. We went to Luigi's, this mm -hmm. arcade place. We went to, uh, where else did we go? We went to, I'm trying to think of the pizza place we went to. It's so amazing. I'm going to have to think about it. You know how I do. I ain't, yeah. I ain't, I ain't from there. Scarf it down, man. Look, you just got to know moderation a little bit, but you got to enjoy it. Dude, so you're from Chicago? You know, a little south, man, Joliet. But I, I grew up, man, most of my formative years. I was back east, mid-Atlantic, actually, North Carolina. Kind of bounced around a bit, man. This fight thing took off, and uh, I decided, this is fun. Let's go to Albuquerque. You know, oh, yeah. and at the time, man, that was the Mecca. But it was just a matter of time. I was heading north, you know. <laughs> I was coming out to Denver like once a month, man. How long can you do it before you just move? It's too sweet out here. I love it. How long have you been here for? Man, almost five years. In August, it'll be five years, man. I couldn't ask for a better spot. Listen, I'm, I don't love winter. I'm not going to lie to you, no. man. But but it's worth it. It's worth it, man. I got no intention of leaving. Wow. I love it out here. Something about the winter, you know. I wake up every morning. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I need to drink water. My nostrils are dry. But after you get past the morning part of waking up with the. With That's the it, right? The crusty lips. <laughs> you said what do you call set that? what do you call that man dehydration my friend it's called dehydration listen if your little bladder can handle it you got a pound like 16 ounces of water more if you can't right before bed once you get used to it you're gonna wake up fire man it's the trick it's the trick get hydrated before you bed up that's the way i understand 
But uh, what? How's the elevation treated you over here? You know. I was living in Santa Fe before I came out here, you know, yeah. it's even higher elevation. So I did all right. I came down a little bit, but man, it was brutal. I remember the day I got off that plane in Albuquerque, I was uh, yeah. staying in a third floor place, you know, while I was looking for my own 50 pound suitcase, whatever it was, damn dude, I was winded. I, and I was an athlete and I was like, oh, well, this might've been a bad move, but my God, it was worth it, man. This is the oh. spot. This is it. That's what's up, man. You know what, Kyle? Yo. Uh, before we get into what you do and what your purpose here on mm -hmm. this planet, I have to do a quick shout out to I'm the in. website, to the podcast, because that's what pays the bill. So here we go. We're going to do a quick shout out. Self promo. Here we go. Guys, all the listeners all around the world. Thank you so much. Huge shout out. Shout out to Kyle for being on the show. We're about to get into straight what he does because he this is big time, guys. This is, this is major. So a uh, great way to support the show is by going to... Ariel, E, N, T, dot, com, boom, there we are, boom, 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 there we are, Ariel, E, N, T, dot com, got the Ariel's Entertainment Podcast, there we go, we dropped three episodes, no, dropped four episodes this Ooh. week, I, four episodes, I usually drop three, but to this week, we dropped four for everybody, because I took a break last week, I went to Illinois, so I took a little travels, so here we go, we got the music, guys, book me on photography, um, podcast, check out my merch, Book me online. That's how we do. Thank you guys so much. I do all the above, guys. Thank you so much. Arielent.com. Another great way to support me is by going to my amazing, incredible YouTube channel. We hit 309 subscribers. 309 subscribers. Because today, this morning, I saw 307. We hit two more subscribers, guys. Today. Can you believe it? We hit episode 157, arielent.com, Ariel's Entertainment Podcast at youtube.com. Mm -hmm. Boom. Guys, the, the love donations, the love donations is links are down below. We got the Venmo. We got the Apple Cash. We got the PayPal. We got the links down below for the love donation so thank you so much guys it helps me pay the bills with the lighting and um with the new merch that's gonna be coming out here soon so thank you so much for that the dms the comments the emails man it's blowing up if you guys go to my instagram guys the comments are blowing up it's ridiculous and it's amazing to have so thank you so much it means the world to me guys thank you thank you thank you I'm trying to get to every single one but you know how i do all right, guys, here we go. I got the prayer of the day, the prayer of the day. Mic check, mic check. I got to make sure the mic, mic, mic check. Hello, hello. All right, I got to make sure everything's working. Everybody's listening right now because this will put us on all amazing harmony right now. So here's the prayer of the day for March 10th, 2022. I say, thank you, God, our guardian dear, to whom's God love commits us here. Ever this day and night, be at our side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Thank you, God, for having Kyle on the show. Thank you, God, for all the millions and millions of listeners listening right now to this podcast and to the YouTube, everything, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the support. Thank you, God, for our perfect health, for shelter, and for food, and just keeping us safe and sound, God. Thank you so much for being our protection, our shield. Amen. Thank you, God. Boom. That's what I am, baby. I just thank him so much, man. I just thank God so much. I just thank him so much. I just praise God. I just praise God. I give the glory to God. That's all I say. Guys, before we get, let's bring our guest because we are on high frequency right now. Let's bring our guest, Mr. Kyle. Right. Woo. Yo, what's Kyle, happening? Tell let's us do this. We, tell us where we can follow you and where we can support you. My man on Instagram, that's where you're gonna find me. You're gonna find me at one Kyle Wright. Listen, that's the number one, one Kyle Wright on Instagram. Let's make that thing happen. You're gonna find a lot of info, a lot of scrapping. If you're an MMA and a jiu-jitsu fan, that's the spot for oh you, man. My but gosh. Let's let's jump on a little more though, man. Look, it's more than that. We're bringing those lessons from the mat to your life. Everything has a parallel. Errol, I firmly believe that there's not a single thing that you can learn on the mats that does not translate to your life. If you're right. trying to figure this life thing out, you got to get on the mats, man. Dude, look at you. Killing it, my man. Look Killing the game. Got to know who you are, man. Got to know who you are. 
got to know who you are. I want everybody right now, everybody's on their iPads and phones right now, listening right now. You know you are. You're on a computer. You know you're on your phone. So when you're listening right now, guys, take a break. It is go follow him right now on the Instagram. You're going to like, share, comment, follow, share, save. Let's go. The name is one Kyle Wright. One Kyle Wright. That's the number one. K-Y-L-E-W-R-I-G-H-T. Motivational. That's it. Yeah. Check it. If it's not putting your butt on the mats, man, I'm doing it wrong. Leave me some comments. Send me a DM. Tell me where we're going wrong. We got to get you guys into the academy. All right. All of these listeners, get them in the academy. Let's get bringing them all in the academy right now, guys. That is number one, Kyle Wright on the Instagram. Make sure you like, comment, share, save, follow. Like, comment, share, save, follow. That's how we build. That's how we build. That's how we build the social media gain. Boom. Bro, that's how we do it. Once you guys are there, Check out the link tree. The link tree will come up. It'll take you to his ebook, which we'll talk about here soon, and his yes. website. I went to his website. It's amazing. It's everything you want to know about him, uh, all that he does. Contact him, and I can go on and on, but we're going to let him talk about all that, guys. Go check him out right now on the Instagram. Let's go. Check it, baby. Bro, so tell us, man. I know you do a lot of things right now. You do MMA, jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. You, you're uh, your motivational speaker, martial arts um, author. What do you want to start into first? Man, listen, it all comes back to martial arts. So we're going to end up there a bunch anyway, man. But listen, it, this is the number one thing that starts, man. Let's talk about this ebook. All right. We just put this thing out probably about 10, 12 weeks ago. It is called The First Five Steps to Unshakable Confidence. Because listen, it doesn't matter how bad you want it. If you don't have confidence, you're screwed, man. You got to start there. You got to get confident in who you are and what you want. Check it. It's totally free. Hop in there. Toss your email. The first five steps to unshakable confidence. You get to see what a coward I used to be. What a what a pathetic string I used to be, man. But listen, if I can move it, you can move it. I God, I graduated school in a mental health facility. 10 years, almost to the day, 2009, I died. And I sat in a room for months feeling sorry for myself, man. I think it could go wrong in my life, man. It did. And I still had it better, still had it better than half the people who figured it out, man. It all starts with confidence. I'd say that's the number one spot. Get out there and put that confidence underneath yourself. It is the trick without it. There's nothing else outside of that, man. You're going to find a lot of really cool stories and ways that it reflects back to the mat. So jump on. If you are curious about what you want, but you're not committed, this might be the step. Don't just get motivated, baby. Motivation is dangerous right now is the only time you got. Don't be motivated. Move. Take your body toward the thing that you wanted to go, man. Look, if you reach decisions promptly and definitely, and you know what you want, you're going to get it, baby. Bro, shout out to our boy, Napoleon Hill. Yo, did you, you know, I list, that's what changed my life. Dude. Tell me, tell me, man. I'm going to blow your mind. What you got? Napoleon Hill. That's How'd he blow your mind? You read Think and Grow Rich, didn't you? Yep. Tell me about it. What happened on Think and Grow Rich? Dude, I thought, I was just, I was just trying to figure out what I, what did I, what to do, dude? I was young. I was probably like 23, yeah. 22, 24. I just want to, you know, just wanted to figure out life, man. I'm like, can't yeah. do, can't party all the time. Can't do this all the time. It started to be serious, man. I need to start saving money, you know? So I, you know, I almost hit, I hit rock bottom. I went almost had no money to my life. And I was like, man, I got to figure my, I got to figure this out. So I finally found a job. Oh, I think, I thank God for it. Cause I prayed and I prayed and God helped me. And then, and then eventually I, I just started watching motivational videos or something mm-hmm. happened, man. And then I started, and then Napoleon Hill just came on, came on. And so I checked him out and I thought, and then I saw that book, dude, that I still to this day, at least once a month. I will listen to him again. No doubt. I can't tell you how many times I've given that book away. You know, I can't, every kid sitting outside, we stop talking. I want it. I want it. I'm like, you want it there. Start, start here, man. Yep. Yep. Listen, when someone, this is the key. When someone asked me what helped you out, like what helped you like figure stuff? I'm like the Napoleon Hill, I'll send you the link. This is what, and he helped. This is what figured my life out. 
you know what, man? And there's, there's so much gold. There's so much gold in the book, but you know, what really made it is before that book was written, Napoleon Hill, if you guys don't know, he interviewed hundreds of the world's yep. most successful people. We're talking billionaires a hundred years ago, the richest people in the world sitting in these boardrooms with them. Right. And when the time came, he originally was just going to interview Andrew Carnegie, yep. right. He was the richest yep. steal everything, man. The richest guy and most powerful man in the world. And Carnegie had a, uh, a stopwatch underneath the desk. And he asked Napoleon Hill, right? This is all about decision, right? This is got to decide. Without a decision, there's nothing else, all right? And he asked him, are you willing to put for free for an unknown amount of time, just all of your time into this? Are you willing to dedicate your life to something that might never pay off? And he gave him, I believe it was one minute to answer. And it took him about 38 seconds, I think it was. He's like, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Right. If you're not a little scared, man, you're doing it wrong. Take that risk. Take that oh. risk, man. I think, I think it's probably the most rewarding thing about what I do is seeing someone tell me a million reasons why they can't and then find one reason why they can't. Right. It's so, so easy, man, to tell me. And, and I tell people, what do you want? They immediately tell me, well, I don't want this. And I don't, man, I didn't ask you what you don't want. I want to know what you do want. So many people have no idea. Wow. You wouldn't believe the stares I get. Like, what do you mean? What do I want? No, you never even thought about it. No. You never even thought about what you want. God, that's the thing, man. You got to know. And if you don't know right now, you got to start thinking about it. And you got to get obsessed with it. What's it saying? Thinking yeah. grow rich. Burning desire. Yeah. Burning desire, right? A definite plan and purpose backed by a burning desire will get you anything that you want. But this is the trick, man. This is the trick. You got to dedicate yourself to it for an unknown amount of time. Look, a carrot, if I plant a carrot seed, that's coming up in 180 days, right? There's never been a guy who asked his pregnant wife or his pregnant girl three months in, listen, is this thing coming? Is I don't, is five months? You're like, look, is everything all right? The baby's not here. Look, you know how long that, that physical thing takes. You don't know how long your goal is going to take, man. You got to stay with it. Yeah. And listen, man, your mind your mind, every time you quit, it's just like the ground. And it doesn't matter if you, if you plant that carrot we just talked about, or you plant like nightshade, a poison, whatever you water, man, that ground's going to grow it. That ground is going to grow whatever you put into it and whatever you water. And you don't know when it's going to sprout, man. Make sure you're watering the right stuff. You got to know what you want. Got to know what you want. That's it, man. If you can find that one thing. That's what it's about. Stop looking at why you can't and find one reason why you can. That is the most inspirational thing for me, man. That's it. Seeing that one shift, that very first shift, that's what'll change your life, man. You found it with Think and Grow Rich right away. It's like a switch. Find it. Got to find it, man. I think over throughout history, man, listen, there have been hundreds of people sharing some really great information. We're yeah. like, you know, stoicism got really big, right? The, the obstacle is the way is one of the greatest books. The daily stoic is huge. Man, that's a thousand years ago. They were trying to tell people how to figure it out. And people weren't listening back then, man. It right. doesn't matter how far we went. This, all the information's there. You have just got to find it. You know, I'm a little old school. You know, I, I found it with like Manly Hall and Earl Nightingale and, you know, these 1950s lectures. And my friends said, man, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Listen, it's like, man, you don't know what these guys know. I mean, look, I lost a few people, but it's not, it's not even, it's not even about what you get from it. Listen, man, I want you to have a million dollars. I want you guys in mansions. I want you driving that Lamborghini, but it's not about the car. It's not about the money. Listen, it's not cliche. It's said a lot, but it's not cliche. It's about who you become to get those things. Yeah. Right. And this is the big paradox. You got to already be that guy. You don't get what that guy deserves if you're not it, right? You can't keep asking for it. You got to be it and prove that you're it, right? You find your core values through trial. You can't lie to me and say you're persistent if you've never had to persist. And how do I know you're really persistent unless you've had to do it twice, right? You find the things that you go through hell for, and then you go through hell for them again, and you might find what you're looking for, man. I think, I think that, it doesn't matter if you watch what, what's that show uh, a family feud with Steve Harvey, right? In the end, he's always doing those motivational talks, man. Hop on you. It doesn't matter what it is, but motivation's dangerous. Motivation's dangerous. Cause you get started on a lot of things because you think you want it. Cause, cause Billy over here made a million bucks, right? Selling his yoga course online. Look, that's Billy's thing. 
as quit trying to chase money, man, chasing money's not a vision. It's not even about the money. It's about who you become. Um, and if you don't become it, you're going to keep doing the same thing. You're, you're going to do want. That's it, man. And here's, here's the problem. This is frustrates me so bad. And it's 99% of us, maybe not nine, let's call it 90%. No, let's be conservative. Let's it, no, we we'll call it 99%. 90, oh, baby, let's do it. 99% of us, man, we keep doing things that we don't want to do and getting results that we don't want to get. <laughs> we don't change. We don't change. Look, are you like, if I ask people, are you doing any better off than you were five years ago? Look, maybe you got a 2% raise. Cool. Good for you, man. But are you doing any better? Are you any happier than you were? You're just doing the things you don't want to do and getting the results you don't want to get. And you just don't stop. And the gap between what you know and what you do is the biggest gap in your life, man. It is the biggest gap. Listen, I tell a story about, I was asking a jujitsu coach a long time ago, man, almost 10 years ago about just some technique. I needed a little bit of advice and he's talking to me a little bit and he says, oh, you know, you just move this over here. I, oh, fuck, I knew that. Mm. Homie, that was the wrong thing to say to your fight coach. Like I said, don't, don't say I knew that to the guy that you asked a question to of how, right? But probably should just put my nose to the grindstone and went for it. Instead, I took a little bit of an ear beating. But at the end of the day, I couldn't quit thinking about it. I couldn't quit thinking about how I did know I wasn't lying to the man, right? Mm. I did know I just didn't do it. And then I realized, man, all my problems in my life come from doing the thing I know I shouldn't do. And I just can't stop. And I just couldn't stop. And when you can close the gap between what you know and what you do, every single thing in your life gets better. And it all starts with a little bit of dissatisfaction. And I'm not saying don't be happy, right? Uh -huh. but, but grandma was wrong, Ariel. Listen, man, grandma was wrong. Don't be satisfied with what you got. You can be happy with what you got. But the second you're satisfied, you're dead, man. Nothing ever is going to come. Why would you get, why would I give you anything? If I go, Ariel, you need anything? You're like, no, I'm good. Why would I force anything on you? Told me you're good. Yeah. Start being honest about what you want. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with the world, man. If, if it's music, you chase music. I'm not telling you to quit your job, but you got to figure it out, man. You got to start and you can't stop. And it might be a decade, right? You know, what's one of my favorite things, to, uh, people to point out comedians, stand up comedians, right? People see that the Joe Rogans and the, the Tom Segura's or whoever, you know, like the Chris Rock's, Look, they just took care of their bodies a little bit, maybe. And they look young. Those are old men, man. You know, and in young people's eyes, you know, that 17 year old sees a guy and they don't realize he's 55 and he's been in that game for three decades. Ooh, and he didn't oh, get that wow. comedy central, yeah. that, that Netflix special until he'd been doing it for 20 years. Ooh. We are too quick to think that we can do it all in six months or, you know? over, or overnight, dude. Everyone wants overnight, man. And look, yeah. that's cliche to say, and I get it, but we overestimate so high what yeah. we can get done in a year. And we underestimate what we can get done in a decade. You know, there's, there's no reason. There's no reason to ever quit ever, right? You're going to hit that You're wall of terror. Doing it. You never know. What's it matter, man? Look, I talk to people. I don't care if it's video games, man. Listen, I'm not a big gamer, but video games get a bad rap, man. If you want to play call of duty and you want to go pro fine, do your homework, uh, get you, pay your bills you spend eight hours a night on call of duty. You're going to be sleepy, but you're going to be dedicated, man. I love to point out people who really have no inspiration, like, man, you sit on your video game all day, but with no intention. If you're going to do it for eight hours, man, why not try to be the best at it? Throw a Twitch stream up there. You're going to get one viewer. Who cares, man? You made some kids night. Who cares? You got to start doing things intentionally, no matter what it is. Think film buffs, directors, filmmakers, man, they spent their whole childhood watching television. Their parents probably told them their brains were rotting out, but they did it intentionally. That's the difference, man. You can't just go into stuff you know, trying to trying to just zone out, right? You work five days a week and you spend two days a week trying to forget about the other five. Man, what kind of life is that? Ooh. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get out here and trying to teach people how to have a life and not make a living, right? Having a job, pulling a double, working a little bit of overtime, that's going to make you a living. But I'm trying to make you a life. And where you're at right now doesn't mean that you're going to stay there. You might lose a lot of people on the way. You might disappear. I didn't, I'm not where I grew up. I think everybody ought to try to get out and see the rest of the world. But if you're not doing it now, when are you going to do it? When you're, when you're 50? Man, if you're, not, if you're not chasing your dream now, you think you're going to chase your dream when you got three kids, two dogs, and a mortgage? Hell no, you're not going to chase your dream, man. And that's honestly right now where all my passion is. 
right? So for those of you guys listening and think it's too late or you started and saw a little bit of success and you quit and got your wings clipped and you quit flying, right? Maybe you got kids and you just got to find that consistency. That's what I'm building, right? I can't talk about it too much. Got a little bit of quiet NDA action going on right now, right? But keep an eye on me literally over the next few weeks because we're trying to bring you in and we're trying to show you what is possible. It's not just about, oh, I just want to be a good dad and put food on the table. Man, look, I'll, I want to put food on the table too. You just heard my little puppy here crying, right? I feed him, I take care of him, but it's not about the puppy. It's not about the puppy, man. It's about giving that puppy the best life possible. Anybody can feed a puppy, man, but we're trying to do something different and we're trying to come together for it. And I think that's, what's going to matter. And, uh, I think that, that if you're in a place where you're struggling, you have to know that nobody's an Island and nobody did it alone, man. I've got not only my mentors and I got my friends that I'm close with, but I can't even build what I'm building without them. Right. It doesn't matter how forward thinking I am. I have to ask for what I want. You're never going to get what you want in life without asking for it. So you find someone who already has the thing that you want. You say, how do I get it? And then you do exactly what they say to do until you find out they don't know what they're talking about or they're lying. Right. You find out that they're a liar and a con man. You boogie out and you go, "Ah, I made a mistake. That's all right. Cause you're going to make a lot of them and you're going to want to quit every step of the way. Right. You get conned, you get scammed, you sign up for some, uh, some like uh, course or whatever. And someone just sends you a PDF and you're like 600 bucks for this PDF. What? Hey man, they got to make a living too, but maybe they didn't do it the right way. And that's how it works. But yeah. you got to just take what information you can gather from there and you boogie on and go to the next one, man. Absolutely. Like for me, uh, I got a couple of examples. Uh, that's all amazing stuff. I always feel like, like you said, we always need to progress, always be better than we always are. Yeah. Are you better than like, like your example you said, are you better than you were five years ago? Yo, for me, I'm always like, I'm like really with me on myself. I'm always like, man, did I do better than I did yesterday? Like, yeah. sometimes I'm like, and it's cool to take a break sometimes. So I think back yesterday, I'm like, man, I took a break yesterday. I chilled out. So today I got to start all over and do it all over again. But yeah, man, uh, I get like, I think that's a great example how uh, you got to like, the, the, you can figure out what you want. Like you yeah. said, beginning. And then for me, that helped, that helped me out is uh, write it down, write your goals down. That helped that. Oh my. That in a vision board, bro. Bro. Let me tell you, if you can't be concise, if you can't fit. Dude. Look, man, I got I, right, right here, man. I keep a goal card in my wallet. Yeah. yeah. Look, it's if you if you don't know what you want to the point that you can write it on a card that fits in your wallet, you don't know what you want. And you got to be specific, man. You're like, I want money. Man, that's what everyone says. Young people especially, what do you want? You know, and they can see, they see they see where I'm going with this. So they try to challenge me like, I want money. Bro, here's a dollar. You good? You happy now? Did you have everything you wanted in life? That's not good enough. Don't ask me for money. How much money do you want? Why do you want it? It's easy to say, I want $10 million in the bank. Why? So you can look at that number and it never moves and you still live the same crappy life you already had. No, you want $10 million so that you can do this and that. And you can have your yacht and you can go live on your boat or whatever you dreamed as a kid. Right. And we get this weird rap where, where it's like, man, I can't, why is everything got to be about money? And it's not about the money. Right. Again, it's about who you become because I can do a lot of good. If I got, you know, where I got. 300 bucks, right? I can buy you groceries for a week, man. But if I have $3,000, I can buy 30 families groceries for a week, right? They got to get rid of this weird stigma that we got rolling because it's about who you can be and about what you can do for other people. And look, it's not, it's not just your crew, right? I can take care of my crew. I can take care of the people I'm close with. And it might not be the same people you are. And it's definitely not the same people that, you know, uh, some, you know, a real estate agent in Oakland is doing, you know what I mean? Or anybody else, you got to find who are your people around, who can you touch and who can you help? And then you just dedicate yourself over, right? That's, that's really the trick. And that's the thing that everyone's tried telling us for thousands of years and nobody wanted to listen. You know, when you look at the athletes, mm-hmm. right, your professional athletes, I can, I can definitely say it in the fight world, right? Cause not so much me, man, shout out fire marshal 205, right? He's, he's seen more guys walk in this gym, and, and say, I want to be a world champion than I can even imagine. And he's like, all right, yeah, come on. Everyone wants to be the world champion, man. But listen, are you interested or are you committed? Right? Because if you're committed, you'll do whatever it takes. But if you're interested, you're just going to do what's convenient. Let me tell you, man, there's nothing convenient about getting punched in the face. 
not a single thing, right? Getting strangled all night by someone a hundred pounds bigger than you. That's convenient. Hell no, it's not convenient. Man, it's the most inconvenient thing you can imagine. Are you committed or not? You know, it's, it's, it's this silly idea of, again, not knowing what you want, right? You don't want to be the champion of the UFC. You want to go live on that mega yacht like Conor McGregor and have your own whiskey, right? You want to, you want to go party at the club after, and everyone knows your name. You don't want to be the champion of the UFC. Get a little more clear on what you want, man. I'm going to give you a free, free little demo of how to do it. It's three, literally three steps, right? Now it takes a while, right? You got to create a fantasy, that burning desire, right? It talks about in Think and Grow Rich. You have to create a fantasy that is so clear in your mind that when you close your eyes, you can see what color the walls are. You can see what color the, the interior of your car is. In That's fact, yes. think, think right now, Ariel, think about your house. Man, do you have wood floors or carpet? Wood floor. You know, did, does your refrigerator open to the left to right or right to left? You know, what color is your car? You can see it because you know what's in there. Your fantasy, you don't know what's in there. And you got to get clear. And when you turn that fantasy into a theory, how can I, what would happen if I had it? And then you turn that theory into a goal, then you're set. Yeah, then man. you've got it written down. Then you're clear. Then you can write it every day. Every time you put your hand in your pocket, you feel your wallet. You know what's even better if it's not in the wallet, right? You put your hand in your pocket to go pay somebody, get your keys for your car, unlock it. You feel that goal card every single time you put your hand in your pocket. You go, yeah, I got you five bucks. Oh, that's right. I'm going to be the champ. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be this real estate mogul in Fiji. I'm going to own half the Canary Islands, whatever it is that you want, but you got to be so clear on it. Yeah. That it's as easy as closing your eyes and someone says, what color is your car? You already know. And if you can't answer with that same confidence, you don't know what you want. That's it, man. Know, know. what you want. Because when you say what kind of refrigerator, I already knew. What, I want the yeah. two doors that open up and you're like, oh my God. That's I'm it, man. The refrigerator with the two doors, man. I already mm-hmm. knew that when you said that. And, and look, man, how many people, how many people live on autopilot so much? Don't even go to the grocery store, Brad. Yeah. If, you, if you want to see autopilot, go to the grocery store. You see all those people in mass, man. It's just like, what? Is just that? rolling, just rolling. No idea where they are. Right. I don't, I don't want to get science, man, but listen, that's, that's how your brain works. Your brain. of your body weight, it takes up like a third of your calories when you're critically thinking, right? That's why every time you get a new job, you go home that first night, like, holy crap, man, what am I going to do? I'm dying. It's because all day long, you're critically thinking that takes so much energy out of you. So your brain is going to send that over to the midbrain as fast as possible, man, because you don't, we don't like to think we evolved to see danger, not to think about how to walk from point A to point B, right? And that's why whenever you drive home, sometimes you go, yo, what happened to the last 10 minutes? Right. Or, you know, I don't remember the last half hour of this movie. Where was I? You know, because you just on autopilot. Listen, man, you go to McDonald's. Look, there's nothing wrong. You want to get a little snack. I'm all right with that snack down on that McFlurry. But if you grab that McFlurry and fries, right, instead of the little salad because you were hungry, that's all right. But you do that two or three times, man, your brain's going to say, listen, you had the opportunity to critically think for yourself. And the decision you made is McFlurry and French fries. That must be the best decision. That's how we evolved. You had the chance to think. And when I gave you the chance, that's what you decided. So now we're just going to make that on autopilot. And that's how your brain works. And not enough people know that, man. You only get two or three chances to think. And then you just fly in on autopilot. And if you don't consciously and intentionally try to rewire that, and it's not easy, man. It is not easy. Look, if you've been Googling and Amazon, look, if you haven't already bought Think and Grow Rage, go get a chapter three auto suggestion. That's where it's at. I'm not even going to say more than that. Just read about some auto suggestion and figure it out. Think and grow rich. Shout out to Napoleon here. You know what I like about it is in the beginning of the book, it's like they give a shout out to the, he's like, uh, this book is made for people that were not even born yet. I wasn't even born yet. And he already knew how much this book was going to affect yeah. people that weren't even born yet. And I was born and here I am talking about him, dude. No doubt. 1936. I think it was, man. There's, there's this weird thing where, where we don't understand that we can create an elect. I'm not going to say like, Oh, you, your thoughts, your reality. It's true. It's all true, man. It's really is. But, but instead of getting caught up on that, what you have to understand, and this is the physical representation of it. That book was written in 1936. Andrew Carnegie, had like half of Elon Musk's money back then, 
You know what I mean? Back then, that dude was like 60 billion. I don't even know what it's worth now. But there were more millionaires made in the Great Depression. We're talking the worst economy ever. Right? Yeah. There were more millionaires made during that depression than anybody's ever going to know because we want to concentrate on that other side. Man, if, if I go with with CNN or Fox News or whoever into a jungle and I'm checking out, oh, look at this little hummingbird, man. It's, it's hatching. Check this out. And they're like, no, look at that pig get eaten by this cheetah. Like, that's cool too, man. But I'm trying to watch this. Quit telling me what to look at. Look, if it's important enough, I'm going to see it anyway. You know, people, people ask me all the time, like, what do you mean you don't watch the news? Don't you want to know what's going on in the world? I'm like everything's going on in the world, homie. Everything's always going on. I know what's going on in my world. You know what's going on in your world. And if something in your world is important enough for me to know, I'm going to find out with or without the news. Let me just figure out where I'm at. Let me help the people that I'm around. Let me help myself a little bit so that I can be more skillful toward those people, right? We put this good and bad connotation all the time. I'm super guilty at it. I'm bad at that. I need to get better because I'm bad at that. And then it, it's almost like a weird negative self-talk, right? I'm not skillful at that. I just need to become more skillful. When you look at it that way, man, no one's skillful at anything their first try. No one's skillful their thousandth try, right? There are people, right, jujitsu, white belt, blue, purple, brown, black, right? Man, there are people that have been training a decade. They're at that purple belt level and they feel unstoppable. You're not good at jujitsu, homie. You're better. You're better than most of the world. You're better than half of the gym, but you're not good. You're not good. I know that's probably crushing some egos out there. My bad, but it's the truth. I wasn't good either. I was good for a purple belt. I wasn't good. I wasn't good, man. That's, that's the way it works. Skillful, unskillful. You can always become more skillful. If it's good or bad, black and white, you might not ever make that shift, but you can become this much more skillful every day. I love that. Be more skillful. This little more much more every skillful. day, like you said, man. And you know what? I got a huge shout out here to Fire Marshal. 205 fire marshal 205 shout out that's all i got to say, man. guys listen i'm i'm so all in on you right you ariel you everybody listening right because for too long i felt like nobody was in on me you know and i didn't have this information until i was almost 30 Right, dude. I was almost 30. Oh. Listen, I'm not saying that you got to change who you are overnight, but you got to know that there's people out there for you. And if you don't know them, come to me, man, because I got your back. I got your back. There's nothing that I can guarantee you more than taking the first step is going to shift everything, right? It's the start that stops most people because you know you suck. And that's all right. You have to just be a little bit honest with yourself. And until you can be honest with yourself, you're never going to be honest with anybody else. Oh, right. And if you really right. want to know like what you suck at, or you want to know why things are going wrong, you can sit on the end of your bed and say, why am I ruining my own life? But you better be ready for that answer. Right. Oh. Don't ask it. If you're not ready for that answer, why do I trash myself every day? And look, man, you can have some good days, but if you take a look at the last five years and you're not better off than you were five years ago, if you're not a little wiser than you were a year ago, you're moving sideways. Maybe I hope, I hope you're not going backwards, but you might as well be, if you're going sideways, take that step, take that step and stick with it. We jump and jump and jump because that looks fun. And this looks fun. Listen, a lot of things are fun, man. I want to go scuba diving, but I'm not trying to be the best in the world. And I know it. And you got to know what you want and what you don't want. If you get anything today, that's it. Get some confidence. You're not going to get it till you know what you want. When you know what you want, you can become that person. But you got to know what you want, man. Got to gotta. Gotta know what you want. And man, dude, I, lo- I, 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 was, I was thinking about where I was I, a year ago. And a year ago, man, that, that, I, I've grown so much, man. I got a house over a year ago. I got my brother and I, oh, we got yeah. a house together a year ago. So here we are. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. Like two years ago, I didn't have a house. A year ago, I got a house. So you know what I mean? Listen, dude? man. Two years ago, you were trying to be the guy who had a house, but you had to be the man who owned the house before you could have a house. Dude. You see what I'm saying? Why would anyone, why would a bank give you a house if you're not that guy? They know you can't lie, man. You can look. Getting a house is a joke, dude. They go through so much stuff, man. 
That's it. And listen, there, there are bad people out there that have a lot of money. There are bad people who have seen a lot of success, but you know what they know? They know who they are. They know where they're going and they have a definite plan to get there. And they just stuck with it. Now they might be doing it off the back of some people. All right. They might be, but at the end of the day, they're also doing a lot of good. Jeff Bezos, man, he catches a lot of flack. And listen, you could pay those guys better, Jeff. If you end up here in this, man, look, sure, we could all pay better. We can maybe make those benefits a little bit better. But at the end of the day, that homie donated $10 billion to charity. Why did he do it? Maybe so he didn't have to pay taxes. Who the hell cares, man? How much money did you donate to charity? In the end, those people got that money. The reason didn't matter. He maybe did it for himself, but we have to balance altruism with narcissism. He might be the most narcissistic dude in the world. I don't know him. I'm not going to assume anything about him. Maybe all of his altruism is just so he can have a little more money. But at the end of the day, man, a whole lot of mouths got fed around the world because of that guy. Right. And he had the ability to do it because of what he worked on over the last 20 years, you know, and yeah, he was already successful. Look, I know his parents were successful, but he can give back. He was hiring 20 people when Amazon launched selling textbooks. Now he can give jobs to millions and also feed billions. You know, I, the reason why it doesn't at the end of the day, man, when you know what you want, it doesn't matter what your reason is. You just got to know and you'll find it. I love that, man. You know what? That is just so grateful, man. I'm so grateful you're dropping all that knowledge and wisdom right now. We are live here in Denver, Colorado, guys. It's, it's, this is a, I told you guys to buckle up for this. You got to be confident. You got to get out there because that's what builds your confidence. Uh, the more you go out and you, like for me, I like to go out and play shows, music. And the more I go mm. out there, the more I express my, I show myself to a bunch of crowds that, that I get, dude, you have, I get so confident from that stuff, dude. Yeah, man. That, like, and that's just me getting out there. Like you said, like if I, whatever you you want to get good at get out there and that's what's just going to make you get better and better and better and then you said move you said stick with it know what you want do things intentionally and what can you do for other people that's it what can you do for other people let me tell you man the most important one the most because you can do it today man you hop on your phone you text you call I don't care who you know and who you don't know. You can climb the chain to get there. Find the person who already has what you want mm -hmm. and ask them how to get it because yep. they know. Listen, man, everyone wants to help you. I want to help you. Ariel wants to help you. I know it. I don't even have to ask. I know he wants to help you. You know who else wants to help you? Every successful person out there. You know who doesn't want to help you? I shouldn't say it that way. But if you walk in and you go, yo, I hope all rich people die. Yeah, they're not going to help you, man. If you if you come at them and say, look, you're a terrible person because you have more money than me. Maybe they're not ready to help you because you're not ready to be that person. OK, I bring up money because money struggles for all of us. Look, we're in a tough time. This inflation's nuts. If you're struggling, I get it. I know it's hard, but it's not too late. You just find somebody who has what you want and you ask them how to get it. Mm -hmm. And then you do exactly what they say until you find out they don't know what they're talking about or they're lying because everyone wants to help people because they got help too. Nobody's an island. Nobody made it on their own. They had to ask someone. They had to swallow their pride. And when they see that you're willing to do that, they will give you everything. And that's a fact. That's a fact, dude. I love that. Dude. Let's go with the dude. We're finally going to jump in the questions. So we have. Oh, snap. Here we go, Kyle. This has just been so super dope, man. So um, we got like 15 minutes left. All right. We'll go through these questions and you answer them, bro. It's all about you. I want to say thank you so much for being on the show. Shout out to all the listeners listening right now. Ariel's Entertainment Podcast, ArielENT.com. Five-star review on Spotify and Apple. Five-star review on Spotify and Apple. Five-star review, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get straight to it. Let's get into it. Here we go. Next question. What is it that you like about being motivational speaker and you said all that ties with your you know your your mma and all mm -hmm. that stuff so what is it that you love about what you do you know it's it's what i said a, a bit ago about seeing that very first switch okay um i got this i got this passion around the kids man around young people right but 
But now I'm realizing I'm seeing it in these guys in their 30s and 40s, right? You're married and you got kids and you've been beaten down too long because you're doing it the way that you thought you were supposed to yeah, do it. Yeah. You did it the way that someone told you you were supposed to do it. But who, who told you? What did they, who did they ask? Because let me tell you, they weren't thinking when they told you to do it that way. And whoever they asked probably weren't thinking either, right? We got to quit confusing mental activity for thinking. When you make that switch, when you learn to think, you're set, man. That's what it is. When I see people that I know, are, I, I feel it. I just thought, I just thought for the first time, oh my God, I had an independent thought. Dude, I still get those, I still get those switches, man. When I'm like, fuck, I did that. I've never <laughs> thought about that before. Yeah, man, you can't, you can't look making it deciding what you're gonna have for dinner man that's not a decision come on man you gotta learn you got that's a chore that's a chore doing your chores right what do you really like what's your goals for today i mean i just got to get a shower and get to work boy you're gonna struggle what do you want man what do you want learn to think learn to think that's the game man dude i like how you can see that you've seen this i, I know what you're talking about the switch bro i know exactly so yeah. I seen it with the kids and now you're seeing it with older adults. That just, that, like you said, that's like the best feeling. That's gotta be the best feeling. This man's a 35 year old man with two kids, a wife and a mortgage who goes, right. yo, what? I you know. mean, I, I can, I can be happy. I can do this for me. My family will love me more if I do this for me. Oh man. That's where it's at. Word. Let's go with the next question. Kyle, next question here comes from uh from our guest kevin vivaldo he what up kevin said, he says who was your favorite influence in i guess motivational speaking and in, in, in mma uh, what came first oh man the mma came first i won't spend long on the story but i took a i took a nasty spill back in 2014 i wasn't training man i had a lot of stuff going on physically like injuries and things like that and i got really bummed because all of a sudden my whole identity was tied up in fighting Everything was about all when you do it, like, who am I? Right. Like it's, it's that Spartan soldier. You can't ask that Spartan soldier to be a stay at home dad. He's a warrior. And now he can't be a warrior. That's a sad guy, man. And I was able to find out what I loved about fighting and it wasn't getting hit. It wasn't getting strangled. It was the camaraderie. It was the opportunity to share an experience with other people who, who are on this journey that so few people are on no really understands the struggle unless you're in it. You can't, I can relate to you. I can say, I understand that that must be difficult because you are strong, but it's different when you're in it. Right. So you've got to find for yourself. So man, in, in the fight world, I don't know who my biggest, like, I guess like Vanderlei Silva, man, 2003, Right. I, I see this, this guy from Brazil, a wild man. I was like, I don't want to fight like that, but my God, is he fun to watch? Right. And I just kind of, kind of started getting there that 2003 to 2012. I don't think I missed a pay-per-view, man. That's wow. like, I was so obsessed in, in that like 13, 14 years old, you know, to like 25, like it's all that mattered. But, you know, on the other end, man, there was one guy and I don't even know his name, wow. but he did something similar to me. Right. Where, where I looked and he was just a normal guy and he goes, Hey man, you can have it if you want. Do you want me to show you? And I went, what do you mean? And he's like, man, just, just take it. I was like, take what? He's like, take what you want. And I was like, all right, man, I didn't understand what he meant. Right. And maybe he could have been a little more skillful in explaining it, but it was like three years later when, when I was down and out and I go, what do I want? And I realized it was the camaraderie. And I said, how do I get that camaraderie? And then I jumped in and I never looked back, man. I just grabbed some kids. I went, listen, let me tell you guys something, right? Just, you know, at the park, you set up, you set up a kind of uh, like a meet, like a weekly meet with everybody. You can just invite everybody. You just kind of talk to some people and you're like, look, man, find, find some guys that got your back and figure it out. Um, but I think, I think the answer maybe that he's looking for, uh, old school, man, that, that Manly Hall, that Earl Nightingale, you know what, since we were talking about, uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, Bob Proctor just died, man. He was a pal of mine. He was a little bit of a mentor. And I remember one time, um, I remember one time he told me that he goes, look, I was already successful and had no idea. I was just an unconscious competent. One day I woke up and I started thinking. He says he was in a bar and he was just drinking a beer. He goes, God, there's nothing but losers in here. Mm. And he looks at it, God, I must be a loser too. Now look, there's nothing wrong with going to the bar, but when you wake up and you know that you're not doing the right things, 
then it shifted it all. And, and he was able to do that for me. Listen, he's a little out there for me. He's a little woo woo for me, but man, he said some things. He said some things that woke me up. Um, check him out, man. He's passed now just a couple of weeks ago, about a month, but, but you're going to find, you're going to find some good info out there. What was his name? One more time. Bob Proctor, man. 60, 60 years. I think he was doing it. 60 years, man. One of the early guys towards the end, you know, it got a little more, yeah. a little more on that spiritual side, but man, it's all worth it. It's all yeah. good stuff. Sounds familiar. Sounds real familiar. Yeah, Dude, man. Check it. I appreciate you with all your wisdom. I only got one more question. What you got? Um, I'm about to answer it. I'm about to give you that question, but you said, I'm going to think about what mm -hmm. you that because you said some amazing things so i gotta i gotta refresh here but before i refresh i gotta let everybody know where they can follow you one more time because this is big time this is major guys go follow our boy right now kyle right let me bring up his instagram boom that's his instagram guys go follow him that's number one k-y-l-e-w-r-i-g-h-t one kyle right number one kyle right guys like comment share say follow like comment share say follow he's got that stylish really stylish tux he's got That'll the bow tie good. he's got the million dollar smile you cannot miss it guys so go check him out like comment share say follow motivational speaker author ebook hit the link tree guys he's got that free ebook check out it out i've been hitting it so here it is here's his website the uh, unified purpose.com the unified purpose.com unified purpose.com guys that's his website that's on his link tree check him out book mm. him right now dm him comment collaborate with him collaboration with him right now guys all right i got 10 hours a week just for you i cleared it out two weeks ago man 10 hours a week if you need me i'm free i guarantee one of those hours is going to work for you Dude, I, I I could talk to you forever, dude. You've been saying so much stuff, man. I, I just wanted to. Just... Hey, man, we can talk anytime. We can oh, talk you know what the any... question I was going to ask? What up? This is, is going to be a deep question. Uh oh. What made you get into fighting? Because for me, I I, I didn't take no martial arts or nothing. And uh -huh. me growing up, uh, I, it would have been cool if, like, if I did get into it, it would be cool to still, still get into, like, martial arts and start to learn it, but I, I, I didn't, like, me growing up as a kid, I didn't really get into fights, or I didn't really, like, get, it, like, I don't know, I, I, I didn't start fights, I didn't try to be a bully mm -hmm. or anything like that either, but, like, um, I don't know, I, and when there was fights, I think I probably either ran away or... <laughs> Or smart I, that's a smart thing to do. <laughs> i probably ran away or probably go told a teacher or something man so yeah I, I i don't know i never i don't even know how to like i just i don't know man i don't know even how to punch or kick really so yeah like what made you get into fighting listen man first off let's get you in the academy all right yeah. you got we got 80 training centers baby all over the place man or we're yeah. about to right so check it out look you can go to denver you can go to boulder you can go to longmont you can go listen find one, stop in, drop my name. I'm not going to get mad at you for it. If you come to Denver, man, I'll instruct you firsthand, but that's the name of the game. It's not just for people looking to be the champion, man. We got kids, we got housewives, we got yoga teachers, people just trying to do a little something with their life. And it doesn't take long to figure out everything you learn in there. You carry into your personal life as yep. well, yep. man. I can give you the easiest answer. No, it's going to sound like such a cop. I wish it was better for you, man. Hey, you know how when you're a little kid, you like to fight with your brothers and cousins and whatever? Yep, yep. yep. Man, I never grew up. I never grew up. I just, I kept liking it, right? All my friends, all my cousins, everyone's like, dude, leave me alone. I'm nine and I'm punching them and grappling them, right? And I'm 15 uh -huh. and I'm trying to fight. And they're like, listen, man, we're adults almost. Leave me alone. I'm like, uh-uh, let's fight. I just never grew up, man. I just, the same thing all little boys do. It's I just, just never stopped. It's just in your DNA. It's just, it must be in my DNA, man. That there is, must be something in it. it. That's amazing. That's a great answer. <laughs> I know, right? It's it's, it's it sounds it sounds like I made it up, but that's the reason. That's a good one. Just that's, never grew that was up, a, man. That was just like a personal question I just wanted to ask. So, but yeah, that's a good one. But here's the last question. Here's the last right. question. Um, any advice for anybody going through a tough time? Mm. If you're really, really struggling, I mean, really struggling. You got to put everything down. All right. You got to drop everything. Do it at bedtime. It doesn't matter. Don't lie down. Right. Don't go to bed. 
drop everything and ask yourself the hard questions. All right. What's, what's the hard questions? Where am I going wrong? What could I do better? Who do I need to get out of my life? Listen, if you ask those questions, you better be ready for the answer. You have to be ready for the answer because you're going to get one. Every single question has an answer. And the better the question, the better the answer, right? If you ask yourself, why am I so stupid? You're probably going to go because you're a fucking moron that doesn't know how to do you know, every day. You just do stupid stuff. Don't, don't ask, why am I so stupid? Say, what can I do in my life that's going to improve the quality of every aspect of how I live, right? And you got to be ready because you're going to find out you got to drop some friends, right? I'm not saying you got to drop your family, but you might have to go less often and not stay as long. You might have a job. You might have to leave your apartment. You might have to boot that roommate out. So if you're going to ask yourself, if you're really, really struggling and you're really looking for the answer, you drop everything and you ask yourself, where am I going wrong? What am I doing? There's this this, uh, this book I'm obsessed with called The One Thing. And in it, there's this focusing question. If you need to really focus, you can say, what is the one thing that I can do right now that's going to make everything else in my life easier or unnecessary? What's the one thing, right? There might be 10 steps, but there's only one thing to do at a time. Yeah. Uh, you got to ask yourself, where am I going wrong? And what is the one thing that I can do right now that's going to make everything else easier or unnecessary? I got writing this down. That's, that's it, man. Write it down. It's hard. That's a hard question. Do not ask that question if you don't want the answer. What's the one thing going to make your life easier? Yeah. Or just meaningless, man. Look, if I gave you a million dollars, you don't got to go to work anymore but you're not going to just get a million dollars out of the ether. What's the one thing you can do? Cause it might not be the same thing I can do. That's amazing. Drop everything, put everything down, ask yourself the hard questions. What can you do better? And always remember what's that one thing? What's that one thing to make your life easier or unnecessary? What's that one thing? And when you know it, you just get that your goal, your theory, your fantasy has to be crystal clear, just like the color of your car and how your refrigerator opens, baby. Oh, gosh. Dude, Kyle, anything else, man, before we dip out, dude? I that's, I got nothing else. Man, I don't think so. Keep an eye on me. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be launching uh, – Woo! Really, really cool. We're going to call it the blueprint. Look, I'm going to step outside this NDA, NDA a little bit. There's this thing, man. Being successful is not about doing things a certain or it's not about doing certain things. It is about doing things in a certain way. All right. I'm going to say it again a little more clearly. Being successful is not about doing certain things. It is about doing things in a certain way. And we are launching the blueprint. And that is the certain way. You have to know who you are. What are your core values? Who do you want to be in every area of your life? It's a full blueprint. It teaches you how to do it in a certain way. And we've right. got your back. We've got an entire community and all of you guys are coming with us. We're going to be there live every step of the way with you. When We can't wait for that blueprint. That's it. Just the blueprint, man. You're going to see it on my social. You're going to see it on the fire marshal 205 social. You're going to yeah. see it all over the place. You might find some QR codes around your city. Woo. We're going to go ahead and get that thing done in the next month or so. Bro, Kyle, thank you so much. Shout out to Denver. This is a huge, huge collaboration for Colorado, bro. This is it, man. I, I've been wanting to come talk with you for a while, Eric. Thank you so much for having me on. Guys, if you're an Ariel fan, come see me. This guy knows what's up. It doesn't matter if it's me or someone else. Listen, he's got some gold nuggets in every single episode. Keep your ears open and think for yourself. Yo, that's it, guys. Love yourself. Enjoy, love the animals. And let's keep it going. Let's keep it trucking, guys. Ariel's Entertainment Podcast, Ariel ENT. Dot com. I'm telling my DJ to get ready with that track. Make sure you guys do that five-star review on Am on uh, Spotify and Apple. Five-star review on Amazon and uh, uh, Spotify and Apple, guys. Thank you so much. God bless. Let's go. Kyle, you already know, man. Much love. We're going to stay connected, dude. Mm. That's how we do, guys. We did it. This is major for Colorado. This is huge for Colorado. Giant. This is big. Yep. Got to change your one step Ooh. here. One You're step my there. second guest of Colorado this week. Yesterday, I did a guest from Colorado Springs. Ah, it's a Colorado week, baby. Yeah, it's a Colorado week. Colorado week local. Wow. Dude, I hardly have Colorado people on, which is so no weird. No kidding. It's so weird. 
We worldwide, man. We worldwide. We were local, here. and then we went national, and now we're worldwide. That's it. International, baby. Every single country. That's the goal, huh? Let's put this in. Okay, that's there. the goal. Let's keep it going, guys. Ariel's Entertainment Podcast. AerialEMT.com. Mm. Make sure you tell your friends and family. We, Kyle, I could talk to you forever, man. We didn't even talk about sports. We'll do we barely. Talk- we're going to have to do a part two. Part guys, two it is, man. Let's figure two, that thing baby. out. Ooh, got them pearly whites. Ah, nice, dog. That was the episode. That was yeah. the episode. 